Happy holidays, everyone. I'm Gio, and welcome back to Carvalho Creations, where I show you how to make awesome props and projects of your own. Now, I was thinking about how I was going to decorate for Christmas this year, and to be honest with you, most years I'm kind of cheap. Just throw some lights up on the house, maybe some inflatables, and call it a day. But this year, I was thinking about it, and I, was, I really want to do a theme, and I thought, what better theme than the Nightmare Before Christmas? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make Lock, Shock, and Barrel for that epic movie. Now, we're going to be using some really inexpensive materials to get these guys done. These are Monster Mud creations, so you can put them outside. But we're going to be using some spray foam, some cardboard, a little bit of scrap fabric, and of course, Monster Mud to get these guys looking as cool as they do and to be able to put them and display them in your yard. Now, I just realized I haven't really done too many Nightmare Before Christmas things here on the channel, so I'm going to change that this season. I'm going to show you these guys to start off our season. You're going to see some other Nightmare Before Christmas characters very soon that you're going to absolutely love. So without any further ado, why don't you kick up your feet, go ahead and grab yourself a nice hot cup of cocoa, because we're about to go wild. All right, what's happening, everyone? So today I'm going to be showing you how to make Lock, Shock, and Barrel from the Nightmare Before Christmas. And now it's time to go over the material list so you know what you need to bring these guys to life. So first and foremost, I'm going to be starting off today's project using a little bit of, this is like scrap insulation board. So this is two inch insulation board. We're going to be using this for the basis of the character to create the shapes of the head. And then we're going to be using some of our great stuff here to fill in the shapes to create the look that we're going for. We're definitely going to need monster mud for this and scrap fabric. And basically kind of doing this like a paper mache deal where I create everything out of foam to create that structure first, and then we'll be putting the monster mud over the top of it to give it that hard coat so we can put it outside. Now you're gonna be needing some PVC pipe. This is just scrap half inch PVC pipe. This is gonna work as our uh, basis to mount our, our structures to something else. So you're gonna need this to give it that structural support you'll be able to use. Definitely gonna be needing some foam clay today to sculpt out our face and features. You'll know, obviously be needing a little bit of a, a craft acrylic paint and stuff to get everything painted up. I'm going to be using an airbrush, but you don't have to. If you don't have an airbrush, you can definitely paint this by hand. We're going to be using a little bit of 16 gauge wire just to create the ears and some of the extremities that might came out. Also for the hat, the top of the witch's hat as well. And then to create the hair, I'm going to be using this like a plastic twine, real cheap stuff. Uh, but this is going to work great for her hair. So we got a lot of cool things coming in this video. Hope you guys are excited. I definitely am. So without any further ado, why don't we get ready to go wild? All right, everyone, to start off our video today, I'm just going to be sketching out the overall shapes of the heads in my two inch foam here. And this is just a gesture to get the overall shape down first. And then I'll be cutting these out with uh, just a sharp blade. Now, when I'm starting off with any project, the best way to go about it that I found is to go from bigger shapes down to the details. So work large, think large shapes first, get forms down, make sure you got a nice foundation with that before you move on to the detail. Okay, now for our PVC pipe to add that little bit of structure in the middle, I'm gonna go ahead and just use some painter's tape and tape these into place. And then I'm gonna be taking my expanding foam here in a second and filling up all the area. Now I'm gonna be doing about three layers on either side of this foam to build up that head shape so it looks proportionately uh, put together. And again, I'm just using my foam, spraying it over the entire surface here, and then I do about two or three layers to get the right thickness I'm looking for. I'm gonna let this sit for about two hours to cure completely, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over so I can do the other side as well. Now again, this is about three layers of foam. Uh, for this project, I probably used about three cans of spray foam here. So two cans to make this whole form, the overall shape, and then another can for the features itself. Now again, once this dries, about another hour or so, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a really sharp blade here. And just so you guys are, if you guys are wondering, the blades I get, I get it from uh, Hobby Lobby. They're super cheap. I can get a, a blade, the handle itself, plus 10 replacement blades for under 10 bucks. So it's a really good value. And when you're working with foam like this and carving it up, it tends to dull your blade really quick. So this is a great value. 
Also too, here as far as the carving, all I'm worried about really is the overall shape. So I'm smoothing some of this, uh, this rough surface out a little bit and creating the contours around the edges so it looks more realistic. And these are cartoon characters, so I'm going to be able to get away with a lot here uh, to over-exaggerate certain areas and not worry about too much detail. The only thing I'm really worried about here is getting those forms and shapes right. Take your time with this step and be very careful. You don't want that blade slipping and cutting your hand. So you always want to carve going away from you. And then here, before I start my monster mode process, I think I thought it needed a little bit more filling, so I'm just using some upholstery batting to fill out that face a little bit more. And I'm taking my time here to make sure I'm pulling all the material very tight around, so it creates a really smooth surface. And this is a lot easier to stand this up and do it this way for these characters, so I just have it sitting on one of my light poles here to help me with that. Okay, now that our monster mode is dry, and I, I left it sit about two days because it's getting a little colder now in this uh, fall season, so I wanted to go ahead and let it sit for a couple days to make sure it's rock hard. And now it's just that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over this now and lightly just draw in the idea of where I want the features to go. Now we're gonna take some spray foam and go ahead and build up some of those features with the spray foam. I'll let it cure a few hours and I'll come back with the razor blade and carve that up to get the idea. Now. What I've come to realize is when it comes to sculpting, especially with the foam clay, because it's so lightweight, it has a tendency to droop a little bit and sag because of the gravity. So it's better if you get the majority of the features done with your spray foam and then carve everything as close as you can to perfection before you add your foam clay over the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then once that dries overnight, the foam clay, I'll go ahead and paint another layer of monster mud before we actually get to the painting and detail work of this piece. So why don't we go ahead and get to that next step. Okay, now I'm just taking a marker here and I'm roughly just sketching out the face. Uh, I'm only worried about getting the forms in this step, so no detailed work here. Just where I want the mouth to be in relation to the nose and the eyes and some of the eyebrows. That way I know exactly where I want to spray my foam. So now I'm going to take some uh, spray foam here and just work in putting some material down so I have something to carve away. Now again, I'm doing one layer. This stuff expands really well for what I'm doing and I don't need too many layers here to build this up. So one layer for the majority of this stuff and then I'll go back only with the second layer on the nose because I want that to protrude a little bit more. Now understand when you're working with this, it, you have to go very light anyway, even if you want a thicker material because if, if you go too thick like you saw just there, it will fall off on you and you'll lose that material. So you gotta really be very gentle and light with that trigger as you spray this foam on here just to get the shapes right. Then I'm gonna let this sit again for another hour to two hours and take my sharp blade again and start to carve out the forms here and start to redefine these shapes a little bit more. Now, the only thing I can really stress uh, as far as this step goes is to make sure you take away enough material so you can easily cover that foam and also bevel the edges where your foam meets your Monster Mud base layer. That way, when you go to skin your, your uh, foam clay over the top, it blends in seamlessly. And then once you paint that second layer of Monster Mud over the top, it's really gonna hide all those seams so it looks like it's one cohesive piece. Now again, I've done a set of these already, so this is my second go, so I kind of have an understanding of what I'm doing here. Uh, but again, I'm shaving down a lot of this foam. That's why I was saying you don't need to spray too much. Uh, you just want to get enough on there so where you can really kind of get the idea of the characters and start to bring them to life slowly but surely. So you can see the way these characters are already coming out and how quickly this is. Now I sped this up, obviously, but it really didn't take me much time at all to get this look. Um, I would recommend having definitely some reference pictures so you can just refer back to them as you carve away to make sure you're getting these pieces all put together correctly. Now for some of these characters, I do go back with a little bit more foam uh, because I wanted to create like some cheekbones and then for the top of uh, Shock's hair, I wanted to use the foam to create a little bit more there. So I had less to worry about uh, in my later steps here, but 
Again, this is just relief cutting. It's a really good exercise if you're trying to up your uh, prop game here and getting a little bit better by showing you different ways to just work on form before you actually go to detail. Uh, it really helps out as far as your skill level as well. So definitely try this at home. It's a really cool and easy prop to do that you can get done. Probably take you about three or four days just for drying time, but really fun prop to do. Okay, I just wanted to give you a little detailed shot after we did the uh, spray foam here and carved it all out. Now, again, I'm just roughing in the idea of the features, but I want to get a nice 3D form going for me before I actually start with the foam clay and the sculpting. The foam is just meant to add the detail to everything, but this uh, spray foam is actually what you're getting the features and the forms from. So it's a great way to get your features put on there and save a lot of your material and clay. So that's them. You can definitely see the faces already coming together and just a little bit of spray foam and a sharp, sharp knife. All right, now this is done. We're gonna go ahead and get to the actual sculpting. Start our sculpt. All I'm doing is I'm gonna be skinning over all the foam that I put down first. So I'm probably using nothing thicker than a quarter inch thick layer of foam over everything I made here. And this first stage, as far as skinning, is going to look insane. Like, it's never going to come out. It's not going to look good. You just got to kind of trust the process. So what I'm really worried about here is just covering all that foam so I have a nice, even layer once all this stuff dries. And I make sure I blend all the features in together so it looks like one cohesive look. So as I go here, again, just skinning, making sure I'm pressing uh, the material into the actual monster mud hard coat and over the uh, the foam here to make sure everything is skinned and it looks good now as i go i'm just doing everything by hand i'm not going to do very much detailed work and when i do get to the detailed work after this is all skin it's going to be very minimal but most of the, uh, the creation here is just all by hand And again, with the uh, foam clay, this stuff seems like it's going to be really super textured and, and full of texture and it's just going to look terrible, but it'll start to cure and then kind of smooth itself out. So don't worry too much about that. Just worry about getting the placement of your features, where you want everything to go. And now I'm just taking my tool here and this is the only tool I'm going to be using uh, to create the detail. And I'm just kind of sculpting in around the eyes, creating more wrinkles, creating more character, uh, a little more, more expression in the face here. Again, in order to work on the sculpting and getting better at that, it's just practice and repetition. So I've been doing so many of these over the last year. I've improved quite a bit and it's definitely something that any can, anyone can really get into. So don't be afraid, jump into it and do what you can. And this process I'm going to use on all the heads, same with the painting. Uh, so again, just skinning over all the foam I have exposed here, making sure to blend in those edges as much as possible. Now this video is only about the heads for these characters. If you want to see a part two where I actually make the body, request down below and if I get enough requests, I'll definitely make that happen for you guys. So let me know what you think. Now, also when I was sculpting, sculpting these guys, I was really trying to push a little bit more of the characters and kind of do it in my own way. So they're a little more detailed than you would see in the uh, original Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I wanted these guys to be a little more crazy looking, a little more expression and wild. That was the idea behind the design for these.
I did want to mention also to you, you can see me here just spritzing a little bit of water over the actual skull part, the, uh, the base uh, foam before I started putting my foam clay on there. And the reason I do that is because if it's a little too dry, you're going to have issues with the foam actually sticking. But if you just kind of spritz over the top of the surface before you put your foam, that's really going to help to have that foam clay adhere really well to the surface once it's slightly wet. So uh, I do that here just to create a little bit of a moist surface so that foam clay really sticks. All right, I wanted to give you just a little detailed look at the sculpture. Uh, now, I, I made these as animated as possible. I wanted them to be very over the top. So they're a little more crazy looking than the original ones, but I just wanted a little more detail and push the detail as much as I could here. So pretty easy sculpt though. Uh, and this is how they look. That center one is still drying. Um, so it looks a little bumpy, but it's gonna get smooth like these ones. So you can see the texture in this, but as that foam starts to cure, this is the result, you, uh, the result you'll get. So you can see on this one as well, it smooths itself out. And once these are all completely dried, I'll be doing a coat of monster mud over the top of this so they can go outside. And then for uh, the hair on this one here, I just added a little more spray foam here. And then I added a little bit of wire. And what I'm gonna be doing is taking bits of fabric, dipping them in the monster mud, and then creating that hair that kind of goes up in that angle here. So also for a uh, barrel here as well. So this is just a detailed sculpt. So I'm gonna let these dry about 24 hours, and then I'll get to that next step. All right, to add our second layer of monster mud, I'm just gonna be brushing this on. And um, it's gonna be a thin coat over the foam clay. I just wanna seal that foam clay completely so I can put it outside and feel a little bit more at ease that all this is covered and protectable from the weather. And again, you're going to press in, make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies and grooves of your actual sculpture. And then you can take the brush and kind of flick out some of that monster mud if it gets too thick and kind of takes away the detail of your sculpture. Just make sure you coat the entire thing uh, completely before you go on to the next step. And here I actually used a little bit of um, yarn dipped in monster mud to create the hair, just to give more of a hair texture uh, for the end result. Like the thing that's great about monster mud, I always talk about it, but you can use almost anything that's pliable and dip it in there to create a hard coat and then add more textures to your finished pieces. While that monster mud dries, I'm gonna go ahead and create the hat. It's a very simple way that I do this. Uh, it doesn't need to be super structurally sound. This is monster mud. I'm really more worried about the weight than anything else. So I'm just creating the brim of the hat itself here and then cutting out the middle section that I form over the head. And then I'm taking another sheet of this uh, poster board or whatever, and I'm rolling it on itself to create the shape and taper it down. Uh, very easy. It's very crude. I'm not worried about detail in this step because I'm going to skin this with fabric and monster mud as well. I just want the shape to be there. So I'm just taking some duct tape here, bending this on itself, and then I'll be taking a scrap piece of this foam to do that back seam as well. I'm only looking for the shape here. Don't worry about, you know, any detailed piece. Oh, it looks junky. Don't worry about that because the end result's gonna be completely different. You just wanna worry about the structure and support here. Now I'm taking my small sections of monster mud and I'm going ahead and just placing it right over the hat. 
Now for this step, you want to create uh, as seamless as a skin as possible. So I'm taking my time spreading all this around so you can't really see the seams at all. Making sure to go around the brim and tuck over it because if you get any moisture or rain, you want to make sure that stuff uh, you know, just kind of goes off the side and doesn't get saturated into the material or into the actual cardboard underneath. All right, for the paint here, I'm just doing a base coat of white. Um, like I said, these aren't going to be completely original like to the actual movie. I'm doing my own little thing to it, so I thought a white base coat would look good so I can contrast the colors. And now for the hair of Locke, I'm actually using this plastic twine, as you can see there, and it's actually braided into three thinner pieces. So I'm going to take all these apart, cut them down to size, and then I'll be taking some craft acrylic paint, just a purple color, and painting these on either side so they're nice and purple and they have that really cool kind of uh, twisted look that Locke's hair has and that's what I was going for. And these work out perfectly for that. Now for the painting for all the characters I'm using the exact same technique so I show more of these in detail and some not as much detail but here I'm just putting that purple color down for Locke, I feel like it suits her character. She's mostly purple anyway, so this is a good uh, transition color from the lights to the darks. And I'm only going to be using this purple and then a very small amount of black in certain spots to really deepen in certain areas. And again, I use this same technique on the most of my creations. You don't need a ton of layers for the paint to get the idea. And because these are cartoon characters, I want them to feel... Uh, flat like a cartoon but also have a little bit of uh, a little bit of texture and a little bit of detail to give them that more realistic look at the same time and then for the lips here I went ahead and just painted them blue with the brush by hand so I didn't get any overspray and then I'm taking uh, my hot glue gun here for the hair and I'm spreading the fibers out at the tip there where I glue them on so they really grip onto the side of the head And then for shock here, I did the same thing I did with Locke. I'm just showing you another layer I put on him because he has more of a reddish color to him. Since he's that devil color uh, character, I wanted to go ahead and just continue on with that look with the red color here. And then to move on to barrel, I'm doing the same thing I did with the other two. I'm going to be using that purple as the deepest color here. I don't want to go black with this because it kind of, it takes away the life of the character if you go to black right away. So I wanted to do this purple for the darkest darks. And then I'll be using more of that red around his eyes to make him look a little more. Kind of that insane kind of worn, uh, wounded look to him to make him feel more like that weird deranged character. And again, I just painted his lips the same way I did Locke's. And then for the hair, I'm just going to go with lime green for the base coat. Uh, so it really pops. And then I'm going to be taking a deeper green in a second here to start to make like individual strands of hair. But it's going to look to, to continue on with that cartoon feel that these characters have. So I'm just taking this darker green here and just creating little strips to make it look like hair. And then for the eyes, they're like an olive, I'm sorry, like a lime green color. So I'm just going to do that by hand because these are real detailed. And then I'm going to take a little bit of black paint, just a dot of black paint so I can hit those pupils. And this guy will be done. Now I'm just going to create or just spray on a little clear coat. But these guys are pretty much done. I hope you guys like today's video. If you guys want to see more Nightmare Before Christmas characters, let me know down in the comment section below. But until next time, Merry Christmas.
Thank you guys so much for sticking with me to the end of our video today, and I hope you enjoyed our lock, shock, and barrel tutorial. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, we're going to be making more Nightmare Before Christmas based props for this holiday season, so make sure you sub down below and you hit those notification bells so you never miss a video. As always, if there's a character or creature you'd like to see me recreate in the future, or maybe you saw me use a technique you want me to elaborate on, please write me down in the comment section below and let me know what's up. But until next time, keep building things, stay creative, and don't forget to go wild. I'm Gio from Carvalho Creations, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, Christmas! I'm excited! Santa's coming! Yeah.